The moment I was sold on Kenshi was when I learned the safest way to train your characters in combat was to abduct people off the road, lock them in a cage, beat the ever-loving shit out of them, reincarcerate, patch them up, and repeat. Kenshi might just be one of the greatest gaming experiences I've ever subjected myself to. Setting, barren wasteland that long ago suffered some sort of apocalyptic event. Inhabitants, bug people, robots, horn people, and human. Combat, limb-based. Goal, survive. Chances of success, zero. When I first started, my character had the physique of a Greek god. But Kenshi isn't vapid. Kenshi isn't interested in a drug-addled one-night stand. No, Kenshi cares about what's on the inside. And inside, I'm weak as shit. And Kenshi, you are not special. You are just as atrophied and just as much of a virgin as you are in real life. Anything from skin spiders to starving hobos can and will kill you, and nothing ever travels alone. I started my journey as a lowlife vagrant, wandering town to town, barely avoiding raving cannibals in the local biology, scraping together meager goods to sell for stale bread. Until I happened upon an ancient armory. This place had a stockpile of robot body parts, and those, those are worth a lot of money. I returned to the starting town flush with cash and ready to join the elite. Using my robot body part kickstarter funds, I purchased a warehouse and immediately got to work setting up a sweatshop. Now don't worry, I didn't decide on textile manufacturing for a cheap joke about slave labor. I decided on it because while exploring the jungle I was ambushed by one of these things and let me tell you, that beak isn't just for show. Not only do these things absorb hits like nobody's business, they do considerable damage and are capable of reaching land speeds of about 40 miles an hour. These things? They keep me up at night. Thankfully, there was a village of bugmen nearby, so I just led the beak thing into their sleeping quarters and wiped my hands of the whole situation. Turns out, these creatures have a lot of skin, and luring them into these innocent bug settlements, who then are forced to protect themselves, is a quick, easy, and efficient way to get a lot of free animal hide. See, I didn't make a sweatshop because of cheap labor, I made one so I could manufacture the raw materials I got after exploiting an indigenous population to fight the most dangerous animals on the continent. Kenshi also doubles as a capitalism handbook. Now turn hide into leather and leather into commodities, and just like that, with sweat, tears, and lots, lots of blood, I now own and operate a functioning and ethical textile factory that is 100% subsidized by funds from the continued looting of mechanical parts. This really is capitalism. But forget owning a building inside a slum city, why do that when you can make your own city? For base building in this game, autism isn't recommended, it's required. The, the Kenshi base building experience. experience. Select a barren patch of desert and plan out your trap house. Next, realize that Kenshi is a broken mess of a game and anywhere you want to build has an angle that exceeds one degree, and that makes construction impossible. Install a mod that's sole purpose to let you build on inclines. Step 4, get your shit kicked in by wandering checks who then try to employ squatters rights in your half-built base. Building a base might as well just be shooting a flare into the sky that says, hey, I wanna die. Even just a construction site will attract hordes of bloodthirsty vagrants. Step 5, have one of your characters get bugged and no longer able to move. Try clicking reset squad position, realize that teleports all of your characters to a single location, including our resident master artisan who has never once in their entire life had to fight. Final step, notice the beak thing ominously in the background that will then proceed to always kill everyone seconds after reloading the save. I'll be honest, this situation broke me for a bit. But eventually we made it back to the base, only for a literal army of wandering bandits to attack. Here we have my skeleton horse, single-handedly fighting all of them while everyone else is stuck in an endless loop of being knocked unconscious. This is Kenshi at its most distilled. After all that, I finished up the walls and went inside to make some beds and, uh, remember those Shek squatters? Yeah, turns out they never left. Speaking of getting my ass kicked, combat in this game is fun! This window here, that's you and your various extremities. If an arm or a leg falls to zero, that limb is broken and left flapping uselessly to your side. There's even a chance of complete separation. Depending on your opinion on the fallibility of flesh, this may be a positive. This game has a wide range of normal prostheses, or you can spring for a robotic replacement. These are just straight up better than biological limbs in every way. Now, if any of these other meters drop to zero, I'm so sorry. Nine times out of ten, however, you'll just be left unconscious in the desert, all of your food looted while you lay catatonic. But it could be worse. Animals don't need to loot the stale loaf of bread from your pockets. Because to most animals, you're made of food. Graphically, this game is gorgeous. Maybe the hash is getting to my head, but I adore this game's vibes. Literally the only time I've taken artistic screenshots in a video game. Sweeping desert vistas, coasts with towering trees made of iron, a one-to-one -one recreation of Vietnam. Uh, don't go there, it's all spiders. This landscape is inhabited by various factions, among those being the Holy Nation, xenophobic, sexist, religious zealots who, if you settle too close to them, come out once a week to partake in a little prayer by sword point. 
There's a reason I settled in the middle of nowhere. The Shek Kingdom, a warrior race who believe that dying in battle is the only way to get to heaven, and losing in battle without dying is a disgrace. If that happens, your horns are shaved off and you become a servant. The direct consequences of such a culture are a declining population due to kamikaze tactics and a nation in shambles. The United Cities, the remnants of the last major empire. They have the most territory and the best technology, all thanks to a robust economy built upon the tried and true foundation of rampant slavery. But credit where credit is due, their emperor has some heavy drip. Hivers, insect creatures who serve their queen with a simp-like groupthink. Also, the first ever biological creature to be made entirely out of duct tape. Honestly, a stiff breeze can knock off their limbs. And skeletons, robotic humanoids, effectively immortal. They are objectively better than everyone else, and they've been around since before whatever apocalyptic event warped the landscape. As a result, not a lot of people trust them. In response, most of them said fuck this and emigrated to a toxic fallout zone that rains acid and made their own city. They're depressing and metal as hell. Even with these and a multitude of smaller factions, Kenshi has a very isolationist feel. You'll spend most of your time alone in the desert, which, compared to the alternative, is a good thing. Exploration in this game is great. There are tons of fun and completely safe locations to discover. Some of my favorite include a forgotten ruin in the middle of the Poison Cloud Desert, which upon inspection contained a couple of old buggy skeletons. Thankfully, my character was a skeleton himself and they mistook him for their leader. How convenient. I had a mission perfect for their expertise. Soon we arrived at the holy nation city of Bad Teeth, a leading contender for the most backwater hick town in the entire game. My gang of cronies descended on the city and the liberation war had begun. I'll be honest, it wasn't going well. These old hunks of metal clearly hadn't fought in a while. Then the river raptors showed up. Long story short, I am now a fugitive terrorist on the run from the church. Down to the south, there's a lovely little place called Fish Island. A great location to fish, to quietly retire with your loved ones and live a laid-back life. No, but it does have anthropomorphic karate practicing fish people, and their leader is, a uh, quite the beefcake. You can only imagine the visceral combination of terror, disgust, and unparalleled lust I faced upon entering the room. Things didn't end well for my team. Later, after recruiting more squad members, many, many hours of rigorous strength training and spending a large portion of my savings on new weapons, we rolled back up, muscles bulging and blades gleaming, ready for a rematch. By the end, we had two broken legs, a broken arm, and two people in a coma. But, in return, we got the Fish Bros stash of three separate AI cores. I didn't realize a giant fish person would be so interested in computers. I guess I have some biases to work through. Cannibal planes, a town besieged by crazy creatures lurking in fog, orbital lasers, and... Whatever this is. The imagery in this game goes hard, and the music really evokes the emotions of wandering a desert starving to death. Apparently, the music is pseudo-procedural. I recommend watching this video by the composer. It's pretty neat. I adore this game. Big and thick open world sandbox experience was some of the most fun exploration I've ever seen in a game. Base building is large, well expanded, and honestly feels like an entire extra game inside of an already bigger game. You will need to mod this game. I'm a big mod purist and even I broke down and got a few graphical tweaks in an XP mod, though I do recommend playing without XP mods for at least a little bit for the true, soul-crushing Kenshi experience. And finally, I'll leave you with this. This is the City of Morn. It's a dilapidated little spot roughly here on the map. I recommend you go here, find the restricted area, trespass, and then start to run. Run as fast as you can. Trust me, it's fun. Thanks for the view. More videos to come. Hopefully. Before the upload of this one, I was only two weeks away from it being a full year since the last real video, so, you know, consistency is key.